Every fantasy begins in Paris, especially the recovering romantic who sits outside the mother of all cathedrals, praying with the dirt and glory of a failed love enshrined beneath her fingernails. Some cities look like a wet dog that's been beaten. And I can say that about New Haven, if it even counts as a city. <laughs> and I can say that about Moscow, about Rome, about Cairo, mid sandstorm fluttering in a skirmish of red dust, and even Philly with its sewers and its bridges and its rust, but, but not Paris. The grandeur of Paris is not lost, not even in the rain. My second night, jet lagged and heart sore, I sat up writing after I awoke soaked from a dream where you made love to me, your body laid over me like an ocean trying to keep the secret of sand, the waves saying to the land that you are not gold, but you belong to me, even now you belong to me. And all of Paris belongs to me, and I belong to this notebook and this pencil, and I sat repeating this phrase, listening to the unusual weather sing its musical as it stenciled the black rain like drop pupils into the face of concrete. I was reminded of the night we sat reading Baldwin in a loft not big enough for us to stand in when the rain beat its head against the roof then, too. I wanted to enter the downpour in my nightgown, let it drown me in the nostalgia that I am yet too young to make a mantra of. Let it chase me through the cobbled streets, sleek with Parisian lights. Let it find me weak with, with love and guillotines and truffled mushrooms and love and saucy salt and subway carts and love and sidewalk cafes. And did I mention love? I mean, Paris is a place where the lingerie shops are named Darjeeling. If that doesn't make you think of sleeping next to a woman and then waking up next to that same woman and kissing her with a mouth of mourning and then together making tea, I don't know what does. <laughs> with the clouds passing overhead in a parade of gray mists, I waltz with my mother from Napoleon's tomb to the cheek of the Mona through the bare Tuileries gardens decorated with not a single flower, but I waltzed with her past the bronze statue looking like a choir of bronze ghosts, past the gossiping fountains and the homeless woman shouting at the top of her lungs, this chair belongs to me and all the Louvre belongs to me and it did. It was made for the rich, but ever since it was the unspoken home of people who need to forget and to remember, and I am remembering to forget you as best I can, but damn it, you belong to me. If only in between the shoulders of September, if only for the width of fall, those days spent walking downtown with you, I could wrap my arms around the whole bouquet of autumn, but you didn't stay. Anyway, we waltzed, my mother and me, and when she grew tired, I danced without a lover's arms or any music at all, never fearing looking like a fool because people understood that I was American and this was Paris with its star-shaped heart, with its alive with its people and with its carousels and Ferris wheels and palaces decorated with gold leaf and lollipop-shaped trees and all the couples pruning each other with their kisses and all the well-clad children learning that puddles are good for footprints, making their, <laughs> sketching their names in the mud like these boots, they belong to me and I belong to this earth and everyone should fall in love in Paris, if not forever, then at least once. <laughs> the city is so romantic, you asked me how romantic I wanted to tell you that even its marble has a voice. I heard it ask me, why isn't he here and why isn't he kissing you? <laughs> my heart, my heart exploded into a champagne bottle full of tears. I said, because he doesn't feel the same. Then it said, you fool, did you forget I belong to you? What are you crying for? You're in Paris, in the rain, and the city is weeping too. She's bearing her soul to you, but somehow she's not one bit sad. That was hot. <laughs> <laughs>